satisfied until he kills your credibility. Oh, dear. He's not satisfied until he destroys your destiny. The devil is threatened by your potential. He knows when God's hand is on your life. He knows that God has made a deposit in you. He knows that he can't take away what God has given you. But he knows that if he can destroy you before you discover your destiny, he knows that he has won this battle. He's not intimidated by who you think you are. Oh. Oh, dear. But he's intimidated by your potential. You mad about your present circumstances. But All right, let's keep it a buck. This is a young 13, 14 year old kid talking to grown folks, telling them they're mad about. Let's keep on listening. I want to hear this finished statement. Hold on for a second. The devil knows that if you survive this season, he knows that your victory bound. All right. If you survive this season, we know that you're victory bound. Here's the problem I have with this. Sir, <laughs> you don't have a goddamn clue. I know we want to do this whole, well, you know, God can use young people and all this kind of stuff. But between people working four, two and three jobs to make ends meet, children are being shot in school and parents are concerned about the safety of their kids. The election is about to happen and we all know the vitriol that has been poured in America right now. Heck, everyday life, mental and emotional health that this young man has no clue about at all. How are you telling an adult to keep their head up and you, your gristle haven't even formed properly in your neck to keep your head up? I don't, I, I think this is a miss by the parents and by the culture and by the church. I started preaching at the age of uh, 15 years old. So I am not against him being a young preacher, but I am against putting someone who does not have life skills in front of adults preaching to them on how they can make it out when he hasn't even faced his real life trial yet. And I want you guys' opinions in the comments because I could be wrong, but it sets the child up for trouble later because he's going to have to eat those words sooner or later and watch this because he's so young when life hits now he has to worry about do i be real about life or do i keep up with the appearance for the sake of the ministry because basically how his as i understand his father is using him like someone uh a father would use a burgeoning nfl prospect football high school player or or how Beyonce's dad did, did her. So it's the family business. And let's be honest, come on, let's drop all this guy stuff for one second. It is the family business. It is bringing in money. Let's be honest now. I feel like this young man could do everything he's doing in a youth service. He can preach all of his messages at a youth jamboree. He does not need to be up in front of adults preaching what he's preaching. Now, secondly, or thirdly, or fourthly, I don't know what point I'm on. Let me say this. Why he sound like he's been preaching for years. I need y'all to understand something. I was raised in church all of my life. So at the age of seven, we dressed like the preachers. We sounded like the preachers and we preached like the preachers. So just because he sounds like he sounds doesn't make him a prodigy. It doesn't make him special. It makes him someone who has been impressioned upon. Because if the same person was raised on the streets, he would be he would sound like the streets. So we got to stop setting these young people up for trouble because you sound like this and God's going to do it for you. And when, 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 when you turn around and all this kind of stuff does not make you anointed, it makes you artistic. Somebody tell me why he's anointed, please. What qualifies the anointing? I mean, if we're going to talk about it, it it's giving y'all. What's that boy's name that was in the lunch cafeteria? And the lunch lady asked him to sing, and he sung, and that's how he got popular. That is organic. Young teenager, he said, I had some good days. I've had some heels to climb. And it went viral, and now he go, he go around here preaching and singing and all that kind of care. Now, I think that is ordinary. That is regular. This is a recipe for trouble. Ask me how I know. 
Very few child stars, very few child prodigies make it with their right mind by the time they hit 30 years old. And he is not exempt because he's preaching for Jesus. It is not healthy for a child to put a child up under this amount of pressure without a strong foundation at home. So let me tell you what my dad did to me. Yeah, Kalante Gavin. Thank you very much, Mariah. Let me tell you what my father did to me. I had to be a deacon. I preached my first sermon on July, June the 16th, 1995, 15 years old. Then I could not preach anymore for two years. What was I doing? I, he made me be a deacon of a church, of, of the church, one of the deacons in the church. I had to fold up chairs and work with the men in the church and sweep floors and serve because there must be a level headedness to this or something's gonna go wrong. All right. Are y'all clear that I'm not against young preachers? I'm not against young preachers at all. But this right here is a recipe for trouble. No 14-year-old, no 13-year-old can tell a bill-paying adult to keep their head up.